today I wanna to share with you guys just a few updates about what's going on regarding a follow-up MRI that I just scheduled recently. And also I wanna share with you guys a little story about a neck injury that I recently suffered playing hockey and how it kind of put me in a little bit of a setback. Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. Today I just wanted to make this video to mention to you guys that I recently just booked an MRI to do a kind of comparison to my previous MRI report to see if there's any changes and see what the differences are over the, the years that have gone by with regards to my previous MRI to see if there's any changes, to see what's gone better, to see what's gone maybe worse. And just for myself to look at, but also for you guys to kind of see what my disc protrusion looks like as well. And also with this video, what I wanted to do is share with you guys a, a injury, a neck injury that I recently suffered and that kind of put me back with my training a little bit. And it's something that I forgot to mention in my previous video when I mentioned, where I was mentioning my training goals, what my future goals are from a training perspective. And so we'll start with the neck injury because that's what kind of led it into my MRI as when I met with my doctor. But start with my neck injury. So I've had a neck kind of lingering issue that has occurred over the kind of the years. More of just a mobility issue as moving to the right, moving my neck to the right, I have a, a somewhat of a mobility issue when compared to the left. I have more mobility to the left as opposed to the right. However, recently I was playing, so I've been playing hockey as I've mentioned in the previous video, and I played an intramural league, or I was previously playing an intramural league at the university. That league has ended now, but our intramural team ended up making it to the finals. So we ended up making it to the finals, and towards the end of the game, it was getting a little bit chippy, it was a close game, but I was racing for a puck against an opposing player, and the puck was near the boards, and what ended up happening was the opposing player tripped me, whether it was accidental or not, I ended up going headfirst into the boards awkwardly. Upon going headfirst into the boards awkwardly, I, couldn't, I didn't move on the ice for about five minutes. The first thought that happened when I went into the boards, I thought I was paralyzed. And after being able to move my arms and legs, after I realized that, I realized, okay, I'm not paralyzed, but my whole neck went into spasm. And I had significant pain in my neck. I couldn't move my neck at all. And I thought, next thought was I had herniated disc in, a ne in my neck. I had herniated a disc in my neck. And now I'm all, I can't move my neck. I'm in spasm. And it was just a, a real significant pain. I was really worried and concerned. But at the same time, my head wasn't there. I was kind of dizzy, had headaches. And my, even my upper back kind of flared up as well. My mid upper back on my right side. So luckily enough, after about five minutes of just laying on the ice, I was able to kind of get up, or at least helped up by my teammates. I ended up leaving the game, and luckily my cousin was, was on the team, and he ended up driving me home afterwards, because I was in no shape to drive. And so after this, I was dealing not only with concussion-like symptoms, but I also had a severe neck strain, which ultimately it ended up, what it ended up being was a severe neck strain. So upon getting hurt, I couldn't go into cervical flexion, so bending my neck downwards or backwards, uh, so cervical extension and any lateral flexion and also any twisting to the right. The only thing that I could do is twist to the left. So upon going home, getting home, I just rested, laid on the floor, didn't move my neck, put some heat packs on, which helped a lot for a few days. But I also had some bad headaches and was dizzy and so I was dealing with concussion-like symptoms. Now I've previously had a concussion before, back when I was about 20 years old. And this was before I got into any strength and conditioning or training. I suffered a mild concussion while working in a factory. This was one of my first jobs, just working as a temporary part-time worker at Chrysler's. I was working on the line and I got hit with a lift gate. And I'd suffered a mild concussion, was off work for a month. And I ended up coming back for about two shifts. And then after that I quit and I never wanted to work in a factory again because of that concussion. Because when I dealt with that concussion, I felt like I was gonna throw up, I was always kind of Nauseous, headaches all the time, couldn't look at a computer screen or TV, had trouble reading. Just my overall brain and head was just not there and it was a very difficult experience. It lasted me about a month until I kind of made a recovery from the concussion. So when I had went into the boards and I was kind of dealing with those symptoms again, it kind of brought me back to that same experience and I was really worried. But luckily within a few days, I felt fine. I felt back to normal. Uh, with regards to kind of the concussion symptoms, I felt like I was back to normal, but my neck was still bothering me. 
So I kind of just took it easy for about a, a week. And about after a week, the pain was gone. My neck was kind of ba was back to normal, relatively back to normal. But uh, another week later went by and I started getting some issues again with my neck. So after that, after the second week, I decided to go in, get an x-ray. So I went into the clinic. They sent me for testing. Uh, got an x-ray done just to see if there was anything going on. Had the x-ray done immediately upon seeing the doctor in the clinic. And then upon that, I ended up booking an appointment with my family doctor just so I could go over the x-ray when uh, they got the results and were able to kind of make their conclusions on what they may have found or may have not found. So one thing that bothered me though upon making this appointment with my doctor was, was that it was three weeks post uh, the x-ray. So I wouldn't know or wouldn't be able to go over my results until three weeks after I had got that x-ray done. So three weeks is a long time guys and people shouldn't be having to wait that long sometimes. But now I know with regards to whatever they may find, they will call you if it's something significant. But still, you know, it's, it, it is a problem because there could be other issues that may not get attention. That's kind of going to depend on what the doctors or medical community finds as significant or not. Still, it's a bit of an issue for someone to have to wait three weeks to go over some sort of, uh, for, to go over their testing or results. Anyways, so my point was, was three weeks after my x-ray. And so upon going into this, this is when I thought about it would be a good time to schedule a follow-up MRI for my lower back to do a kind of a comparison. But I'll get into that in a sec. So I went into me and my doctor, my family doctor. I actually didn't even get to see my family doctor. However, he was there, but instead of actually getting to see him, uh, they sent a, he sent a residency student in to come talk with me and consult with me. Now this was a bit of a, this bothered me a little bit because I hadn't seen my family doctor in about a year and a half. It had been a long time. And it's fine that he's gonna send the resident student, residency student in. I don't have a problem with that. The, the issue is though is that, okay, I haven't seen you for a year and a half. You know, you'd think you'd come in, at least say hi, how's it going, how you doing? At least for a minute or something, just to quickly check up and at least say hi at least. So that kind of bothered me just kind of from a personal level because I just felt like he didn't care about me because he's just sending a student in without even acknowledging me after not even seeing him for a while. So that kind of bothered me, but the student that was, I was talking to the medical student, was a decent guy and we went over my x-ray, we ended up going over my x-ray and the x-ray ended up showing some inflammation. So it shows some inflammation. So this is, keep in mind guys, the x-ray was roughly two weeks after my initial injury and it showed some indications of inflammation now, um, but it didn't really show what the injury was or specifically may have been going on, just some markers of inflammation. So it's harder to determine what may actually be going on. And I still kind of have some issues to this day right now, specifically the mobility issue, but I've been dealing with the mobility issue for a while now, but I feel like it's gotten slightly worse after kind of suffering that injury and going headfirst into the boards. So that, now that leads me into my next point. Um, so we just went over the results, whatever. Uh, didn't, there wasn't really any clarification or anything, but I got onto my next point about scheduling an MRI for my lower back. Now, this is where things kind of bothered me. And what bothered me was I suggested, or I suggested if I could, or I asked if I could get a, another MRI uh, done on my lower back just to kind of do a comparison to my previous report because I had dealt with a lower back disc protrusion causing me sciatica and I had a lot of problems and I was in significant pain at the time. However, I'm now at the point where I'm practically pain free. Uh, I don't have that sciatica anymore. I still deal with the odd maybe flare up or issue and that kind of depends on, like I said in the previous video, maybe if I get a bad night's sleep or if I maybe and then I go do heavy squats or something, I may get some issues, but it's not so much disc related. I feel like it's more joint related with my facet joints. So I just wanted to get another MRI done specifically to see what's going on with my lower back, to see some of the progress that I've made, but also maybe some, also to see if there's any more damage that has occurred to certain areas or certain other problems uh, that showed on my previous MRI report. And also I obviously wanna show people maybe the progression that has occurred over time, specifically with what my disc protrusion uh, looks like now, or if it's completely gone, or if maybe there's just a, maybe a little protrusion, it's just it's not causing pain. So I'd like to specifically see what's going on and just to show other people what 
where I'm currently at with my lower back and what it looks like. Anyways, point being is he completely like shut me down right away and was like, no, we don't hand out MRIs or we don't give out MRIs unless someone's in significant pain or has a significant issue or injury. So I said, well, well, listen, look, I had significant pain, had a lot of issues. And so I technically had to convince him and push him like, listen, like I want to see what's going on because I'm back to squatting, back to deadlifting, back to playing hockey. But you know, there's still the odd time I might get a little bit of pain or a little subtle flare up, maybe in my lower back when I'm squatting or something. His response was, well, maybe you should seriously consider stop squatting or deadlifting, or you shouldn't be squatting or deadlifting at all. Now his response there was a big piss off and I'll tell you why it's a big piss off because he's telling me that I technically can't really get an MRI, but at the same time he's telling me I can't squat or deadlift or I shouldn't be doing those activities or taking it easy on hockey. That's a freaking piss off to me, quite honestly, because if I can't squat or deadlift, why can't, then why would it, if I can't do those movements or activities that like you're suggesting, then wouldn't it be an indication that you should still send me for an MRI at least to like at least see what's going on to give me a better reasoning if I should be able to or not? I don't know. It was, it was, you know, I hate when someone, a doctor says you can't do this or can't do that because I'm actually deadlifting fine right now. I'm squatting fine for the most part. Just got to manage it properly. Like for instance, I did, I deadlifted uh, 325 today, sumo, totally fine. No problems. Yeah, this doctor's telling me I shouldn't be able, to, shouldn't be doing that, but you can't really have an MRI. Anyways, point being is I ended up eventually convincing him. Got the MRI scheduled. Don't know when it is. Haven't got a call from the hospital. It's been about two weeks now since I've seen uh, the doctor there or the student. Uh, mind you, keep in mind, guys, my previous MRI was scheduled for six months out from the initial time it was scheduled for. And I was lucky enough to get in a month later just because there was a cancellation. So I was lucky enough to get in there. So this could take a quite some time to get this MRI done. And one thing I think I'm going to do actually is going to book another appointment and just to get, uh, to get um, some evaluation on my neck as well. Cause I didn't specifically mention to go over, to get more testing done on my neck. So while they're looking at my lower back uh, with regards to this MRI, I'm probably going to go in. It'd be a good idea at least to just tell them to uh, look at my neck as well. Cause I'm still kind of dealing with some issues and, what he had mentioned was if, you know, if you're still dealing with some issues post uh, seeing the doctor or the student at the time to come in and then, then we'll, we'll do further testing. But I don't know, I should have probably just scheduled it there at the time, but I think I'm gonna go in there for my neck because my neck's just, it's just bothering me enough that I wanna get it looked at and figure out what the problem is. It's not that it's anything serious or bad or it's holding me back or anything or it's causing me any like, pain really. It's just a lot of discomfort and I have a mobility issue I want to kind of get that addressed and fixed, or at least find out what's going on. Anyways, that's just a little update video I wanted to talk to you guys about and share with you. So that neck injury ultimately kind of was a little bit of a blip with my regards to my training because it, I had stopped training, working out for about two to three weeks within that period. And so it took me some time to kind of get back into things. And I was deadlifting 315 prior to that, which was the most I deadlifted uh, since prior to my lower back injury. And just today I did 325 sumo, which was a positive, which was good. So a good progression there. But I just wanted to share that with you guys because uh, there was some things I forgot to mention in the previous video that I made about my training goals, specifically regarding the neck issue and the neck injury and the MRI update also. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any, uh, if you're someone that's currently uh, maybe scheduled for an MRI, or if you got some results or you've got some clarification, kind of love to maybe hear your story with regarding maybe an MRI that uh, maybe you had a problem scheduling one, maybe you had a push for it or the doctor wouldn't, wouldn't even schedule one for you, whatever the case may be, would love to hear about it because I think it's a major issue in today's society with regarding a lot of these testing, testing that is done and it's putting a lot of people in bad positions and making a lot of people's injuries worse because they're not able to get that further testing to kind of actually clarify and get clarification of what their injury's about. So leave your story if you're someone that has ever been in that position. And also, if it's your first time watching this video or one of my videos, be sure to subscribe. I'm always kind of posting different fitness tips and tips regarding lower back injuries. Okay, guys. So that's it for today's video. I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day. Take care.